This episode of Baywatch aired on October 28, so uh, happy Halloween, everyone! And what better way to celebrate than with MTV's Beach Blast? MTV's Beach Blast was, as far as I can tell, created solely for this episode of Baywatch. The only other Beach Blast I can find is two pay-per-views from WCW in 1992 and 1993. There was a show on MTV from 1994 to 1996 called Sand Blast with roughly the same format, and while Beach Blast wasn't real, it is hosted by various MTV VJs from the time, including, unfortunately, our second appearance of Jenny McCarthy. But this time, she's playing herself, so there's more reason to hate her. For the first time this season, we've hit an episode I have a script for, or at least a partial script. I only have a couple of scene inserts, but some things are of note. One is that both inserts are labeled MTV Beach Blast, while the final episode title leaves the MTV part out. Probably because wherever they syndicated the show, they didn't want to advertise a rival network. Also, this opening scene where Cody and Numi stop a couple of purse snatchers was something inserted after shooting had begun or was completed. I'm going to assume this was to show off another mode of cool beach transportation, as the script tells me this is the Sonic Jet. As far as I can tell, it seems to be a fancy Wave Runner TM with hoses attached. This scene could easily also just be because, as usual, they were running short on time. The last insert I have is a revision where Mitch encounters a team raising some money to compete in the Special Olympics. This is labeled the shooting script, so you can tell by comparing this to the final scene how much improvisation is coming from Hasselhoff. The lines are loosely the same, but not really. But in all fairness to Hasselhoff, he did make it sound a little better. He sees the kids watching some MTV and is inspired to call up old friend Jenny McCarthy for some assistance. But in the draft I have, he just waltzes over, sees they're raising money, and says, You need to spread the word. Fast. You need people. A lot of people. You need exposure. You need... An idea. My friend Jenny. In the end, it's still a stupid plot point that's just repeating what happened in that other Special Olympics episode, except Mitch's old friend is now an anti-vax idiot, but it's interesting to see how loosely Hasselhoff decided to interpret his lines. Mitch also seems confused as to what they're raising money for specifically, but his spirit is in the right place. We're trying to get sponsors so these athletes can compete in the Special Olympics. We're trying to raise some money and bring awareness to the program. So anyway, that's where we are in the episode. Mitch just casually calls up Jenny McCarthy for some help, despite seemingly not recognizing what MTV is, and somehow Jenny McCarthy is able to pull some strings with MTV after a two-second phone call, despite just being a host on their network. We're gonna be on MTV! Yeah! And just like that, MTV is putting on a competition called Beach Blast, a test of athletic skill between the MTV Beach House VJs and the Baywatch lifeguards. All of the money raised by their sponsors will go to the athletes in the Special Olympics, and, I guess according to Mitch's phone call earlier, raise awareness or something. Anyway. Hey kids, the joke about me being anti-vax in my last episode of Baywatching has sure aged well now that we have a COVID-19 vaccine and we're in year three of a pandemic. These comedy videos will always be marked with tragedy when people look back at them, forever knowing they were recorded during an avoidable mass trauma. MTV! MTV sure works fast, because not only is the Beach Blast competition set up already, this is a week-long set of programming? One of the VJs is Simon Rex from the Scary Movie franchise and, of course, the Oscar award-winning film Karate Dog. Cool stuff! And here's our Baywatch MTV Dream Team! Mitch, Numi, Cody, Jordan, and Donna. Simon Rex made some vague threat against CJ, but we all know Pamela Anderson isn't going to show up in this plot. In the back of the truck, we also have recurring lifeguard Chris, and the credits tell me Crush is in this episode, but I think she's just at the end, so I'm not sure who this is. Crush is someone I haven't mentioned before, but she's definitely been around. I'm getting better at remembering the randos we see on the show as the years go by. Speaking of which, if you watch Baywatch from the beginning, you can make a Where's Waldo game out of spotting Deborah Schwartz. Also, Chris isn't in any other scenes after this intro. Welcome to MTV's Beach Blast, Mitch Buchanan! Tell the audience a little something about yourself! <laughs> well, Jenny, the other day I electrocuted a guy to death in my friend's apartment after he was possessed by demons. Now I'm ready to totally cram the MTV VJs in the ultimate beach battle! Everyone does seemingly improvised TV safe tough talk, saying how the MTV VJs don't stand a chance. And Numi, adorably, is the only one who calls them DJs. I'm Numi, and I'm gonna hate to see parts of DJ all over the beat. Oh! 
Meanwhile, CJ, Caroline, and Cody, the triple C's as they're commonly referred to, are having dinner together. CJ is serving up some pickled eel, which no one else seems that into. As we know from season 5, CJ isn't into smoked eel, but I guess pickled eel is fine. Anyway, this pickled eel is meant to butter Caroline up, because CJ and Cody dropped the bomb that Cody just got evicted from his place and he's moving in! Turns out you can't pay rent with Monopoly money. We can split everything three ways. Three ways? Wait, does Stephanie not live there anymore? Stephanie did this! I don't want a boy to live here with his stupid man problems! Why? I still have that sea lion in the bathroom and you never complain about that. I thought that was Stephanie! Uh, does that mean I have to wait for the sea lion to pee? Because I've been holding it in forever. You always do this, CJ! You're always replacing my overbearing sister with a sea lion! Hey, Caroline, can I have a pickle deal? It'll really help me beat those MTV VJs. This leads into an argument about various things Caroline and CJ do that annoy each other. Mainly, CJ is a little bit messy and Caroline is a neat freak. Everyone who recalls Stephanie and CJ's infamous salt fight will know that they had the same argument, as Caroline is doomed to follow in her sister's footsteps. The Cody moving in surprise is left unaddressed after that, I guess because the cat fight was more important. Anyway, some random hang gliders want to crash MTV's Beach Blast? Crashing a TV show? Prime time. Nothing to do but do it. Oh no! This will surely lead to disaster, and the ensuing rescue will be caught on the MTV cameras. Hey, there's no hang gliding off these cliffs. Hey, sorry, officer, we didn't know. Or not? Mitch? Hi. Ugh, what do you want? I'll save you all the suspense. It turns out humble Mitch once rescued MTV VJ Adalis de Leon when she was a child, and she drew him some fan art. This gives the show an opportunity for Mitch to comment on how her boobs grew since she was 14. 14 year old girl with braces and a body like an ironing board. Well, some things do change. Truly small world we live in. Anyway, beach games for kids! Oh no! Oh no, I can't swim! Just listen to this stunning commentary. This is a truly Olympic level battle of athletic wit. Get him in the butt! That's right. Oh god, he got in the butt! Everyone's getting each other in the butt for the Special Olympics! Is this dumb? Yes. But sometimes, as I have learned over the years, it's fine to watch people do very stupid things for a good cause. Keep getting everyone in the butt, Baywatch. We should all take note. I also would like to point out that this episode aired the same year Michael Newman won the National Iron Man Championship. During the Giant Gloves boxing, the extra in the red bikini is an uncredited Marlise Andrada, who also previously appeared somewhere in the bikini contest four episodes ago. I mention this because she is noteworthy for being completely unnoteworthy, as will become clear when she is added to the main roster next season. Oh, I can just hear the sound of millions of viewers holding their breath for the premiere of Skylar, Baywatch's most important character. Anyway, Cody and CJ are moving his things in, and it's a very cold October. Caroline still isn't happy with the arrangement. Well, 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 if it isn't my two yellow-bellied roommates! There's only room for one of us in this here apartment. We draw pistols at dawn. The scene ends with Cody checking out Caroline's underwear. The whole thing is weird. Cheese and crackers. It's Rando Lifeguard versus the big boobed lady I'm told is named Cat on the Loose. I'm glad we get to see a competition with these two randos, whilst Mitch is suspiciously absent from about 90% of the MTV plot. I'm also pretty certain this is the only place you'll see footage of Donna D'Errico stepping on Simon Rex's head, so hey, get in on this action! The Baywatch lifeguards have had a wide lead this whole time, and at no point has it even been close, but let's see who won! The winner is... Baywatch! Yeah! Hooray! Give me my medal, Special Olympics losers! But wait, maybe that hang gliding scene wasn't a complete waste of time? Just kidding, it still was. What's going on? Help? Meanwhile, CJ is watching Eddie's Gilligan's Island dream sequence on TV? Yes, I'm Gilligan, you were right. This it's a lot bigger inside than it is outside. I didn't dub that in. What in the world? I became an MTV Olympics today. Basketball! Next time on Baywatch Nights, Mitch and Ryan are stuck in a haunted time travel brothel cabin thing. Can Destiny's ghost help them out? Or are they doomed? Boo!